Welcome to Nick's Home Court with your host. My name is Greg Armstrong. This is episode number 48. This is going to be a quick episode. I just wanted to uh, talk about last night's game. I was back and forth between that and the Yankee game. That's how much of a diehard Nick fan I am, right? The Yankees in the playoffs, and I'm still watching the Knicks because I was interested in seeing Frank or what they call him, French, the French Prince. That shit is whack. But anyway, um, how can I put it? Let me just take it from the top just so – and then I can get into the things I want to get into. First of all, the first thing I want to say, the Knicks defense sucks. This de- Knicks defense suck. It still sucks. It's always gonna suck. Now nah, I'm just playing about the always. But my issue I have with defense is I I see I don't know I don't I I don't I don't play like I don't play anymore. I mean, but when I did play, defense was my thing. You know, I mean, get me wrong. I I had a, I had handles, and I was good point guard because basically everybody wanted to play with me because I I hooked everybody up. I didn't care about scoring. I cared about winning. And it's a difference. It's a different mentality when you play like that. However, my whole thing was I wanted to lock people up. That was just me. So one thing I did and one thing I I don't see the players do is if, and I've played in leagues and stuff like that, my whole thing is I would lock up my man off ball because my first sport and my first love was football. And... I used to stay close to my man the whole possession when they team have the ball. Yeah, I can help off, but it's a simple phrase that I hear Walt Clyde Frazier say all the time. See your ball, see the man. If you do those things, which means your head is on a swivel. You're looking at the ball. You're looking at your man. You're looking at the ball. You're doing it. Sometimes you're peripheral. Sometimes you look. You, you don't stare long in any direction. You look. You keep looking back and forth. like Almost like you security on defense. And basically, I never left my man open when he didn't have the ball. I didn't, this is what you're relaxing for. What are you doing? Why are you backing up? Unless that's what the defense calls for. But too many times I see the Knicks, when the ball gets moved around or when somebody penetrates, a guy, like let's just say at the top of the key, a guy penetrates from the corner, right? The man who's defending the man at the top of the key sags off his man for what reason, I have no idea because they sag off their man and they don't even become a part of the defense. In other words, when a man is penetrating from the corner or from the side or even from the front, I noticed that Nick defenders will sag off their man but not help out on defense. They just sag and, ah, well, the ball's on that side of the court, so I'm just going to back up. I don't understand why this happens, and I don't understand why this never gets addressed. Again, it might be because – there's an old see this is the problem the problem with the NBA right now and I feel like there's an old way that some of these coaches play defense. They want to protect the paint, which is important, and protect the mid range, which is less important important. As a team, the best defensive teams run people off the three point line. That's what you do. You don't you don't try to protect the mid range because the mid range is an inefficient shot, an inefficient shot. So you want to run at them, you want to make them come inside the paint. I mean, inside the three point line. I'm not saying leave them open from there. I'm just saying you want to run them off the three point line. But I see all the time in these games, especially with the Knicks, the ball can be on the other side of the uh, of the um, half court, and the person starts sagging and then there's a rebound or this loose ball and they give it right to your man right to your man you sagged off while you watching the action oh what's going on over here or the other guy does it back door because you're not paying attention i just don't understand it's really not a hard concept stay with your man everybody stay with your man you can do rotations and all of that but a lot of times now sometimes you get caught in your rotations i've seen the knicks try to rotate and get caught in their rotations i get that you got to do all this recovery and stuff that's very difficult and sometimes there's nothing you could do about it but i'm talking about the guy i've seen it a pick and roll three-point shooters on the side his man is guarding him the the man with the ball is penetrating he's he's going into the paint 
the defender that has nothing to do with the situation sags off his man and they always hit his man for the open three. I've seen it happen too many times. If anything, sag and keep an eye on the ball. So when he throws that pass, you can jump and steal it. I've seen LeBron do that many times. I've seen a lot of players will sag a little bit off that three-point shooter and wait for that pass. That's a good move. But I just don't understand that. So my thing is with Hornacek, he's preaching defense, and I think he's just saying that because he, he knows that Nick fans want to hear that. And But to me, the Knicks' actions doesn't seem like actions of a team that really are overly concerned with defense. I like Tim Hardaway Jr., who played well last night, and I will talk about him. But he's not a defensive player, but you just signed him. You just traded Carmelo for Ennis Cantor, who played well as well, and McDermott, who are not known as defensive players. Now, I'm not dissing that trade because I'm, I'm fine with the trade. But my thing is stop acting like y'all are going to become a defensive team. It's not going to fucking happen. Stop playing that game. Hold on a sec. You're a really good offensive coach. You played in Utah with Jerry Sloan, who was a great offensive coach. And they had a good defense, but they had an unstoppable pick and roll. Implement those, those principles shoot a lot of threes, which is good. And at the same time, emphasize the offense right now. Make them become perfect that offense. Make that offense really good. You have some great, you have some really good offensive pieces and perfect that offense because Knicks are losing games. Knicks lost games last year and they lost game. They're going to lose games this year based on one thing. When other teams stop the Knicks, see, this is what I'm looking at. I'm not saying throw your hands up and give up about defense. I'm not saying this. What I'm saying is if you perfect your offense, if you make your offense potent, you have less scoring lapses. And the reason why I mentioned that is because every time the Knicks lose or, 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 or give up leads is because they're not scoring because they can't play D. If you stop the Knicks five times, you'll have a 10 point lead. They are not playing any defense. I'm not saying they're not trying, but maybe they don't have the personnel. Maybe they just don't have the personnel. But again, I'm going to give Hornacek some time. I'm very patient right now. It's not like we're going to win a championship, but it just pains me when I watch this. And it's like, why are you telling me that you're going to play defense or, or you preaching defense? And then you got all these offensive players. Come on, dude. Maybe your best offense is your maybe your best defense is your offense. And Knicks want to run. Guess what? You can't run if you don't play D. You can't run if you don't play defense. If you don't get if you don't secure the rebound, which happened a lot last night. Rebound after rebound, they didn't secure. So you can't run when that happens, people. So anyway, that was one thing I just wanted to talk about because I hate him saying defense, defense, and honestly, every time he mentions and mentions defense, I give him the side eye, man. I just look, come on, dude, really? Come on, come on, hold on a sec. Hold on a sec, you're not a defense coach, man. So I could like, stop saying that shit. Tom Thibodeau is a great defensive coach, and guess what? Minnesota was terrible on defense last year, and that goes to show if you don't have the personnel, you're not going to be a good defensive team, period. You can, you can get away with it if you have – really elite defenders and a couple of poor defenders and they'll just do their part. Paul Pierce has never been a good defender, but you put him next to Kevin Durant and he doesn't have to do as much. He becomes a decent defender. Same thing with Steph Curry. You put him around Draymond Green, you put him with Kevin Durant, you put him with Klay Thompson, you can hide him. You can hide him and he can play his role. You'll forget about him. He'll start getting steals and shit. But it's just frustrating when I hear him say defense. I want to turn the TV off I, 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 or or whatever. If I'm watching him speak, I just don't want to hear it anymore when he talks about defense. Just say, he doesn't have to say, oh, we're not going to try to work on defense. But just say, listen, you know, we're going to continue to work and, and get better as a team. And that's it. You don't have to get all get all them details. D'Antoni didn't play defense. Was he coach of the year last year? I'm not even sure. But his team, Houston doesn't play D. They just outscore you because they know who they are. So this is my question to the Knicks, the young Knicks. What is their identity going to be? What is the identity that Coach Hornacek want to give them? What identity are they going to have? Cleveland, another team, they don't play defense. 
Cleveland is a poor D. They at one time they was a good defensive team, but they're a poor defensive team. But you know what they are? They're an elite offensive machine. Elite three point shooting machine. The elite on offense. So you're really not gonna stop them many times. And if you stop them, you better score. And you might be able to score. But they're an elite offensive team. What makes Golden State so great is they're an elite off, out of this world offensive team and a really, really good defensive team. So, you know, I just, you know, I, it frustrates me when they say that. So the defense was atrocious, which I expect. Um, there was some bright spots. Um, Frank Nilakina made his first appearance. We finally got to see him play. I mean, besides the scrimmage, I really, I looked at the scrimmage, but the reason why I didn't do a podcast about that, because it's a scrimmage, you're playing against your team. <laughs> it's, 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 it's not really exciting to me. I just was thirsty. I watched it. It was cool, but mm, I wanted to see when people are really trying to stop you. So, you know, um, Frank, I think he played well, considering everything. This is his first game. He's 19. Uh, he's at the garden for the first time. There probably was some jitters, even though he looks like a cool customer. He looks like a calm, cool customer. I'll tell you that much. And um, I thought he came in and I think he played well. I think that, you know, when I look at him and I see sessions, this is a big difference. Like he's going to be starting soon. He might start the season as a, as a starter. He just might prove to be better than those guys. You know, Everybody's worrying about training wheels and uh, he's gonna he's if he fails. Listen, th- he played with grown men already. They let him when he was eighteen play with grown men who got to the the the, the finals. <laughs> this is not gonna shake him up. You don't think it's pressure playing at home, playing at home in France and in 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 those leagues. You don't think that's pressure? Shit, I felt more pressure playing in front of my people than I did on when when nobody knew me. When nobody knew me, that shit, nobody can't tell me shit. So anyway, I was impressed. You know, um, he should get comfortable as time goes on. He should have more command. One thing I noticed that he looks like he's trying to be a pass point, pass first point guard, which keeps the ball moving. I, I it looked like honestly, you can see the free from Melo. You, you, you saw the difference with Melo not there. The freedom as far as the ball movement. And you also saw a lot of misses, but you saw a lot of freedom there. And that was pretty cool. It was good to see. Then you have, uh, let's talk about KP. You can see KP was pressing a little bit last night, but I like it. I just want to say I like it. He's being aggressive. He's getting the ball. He's not passing it back. He's like, no, I got this shot. I'm in my wheelhouse. This is where I like to shoot. I'm going to do my little dribble move and, and, and score. Something that he could have done last year, but he didn't do. But now he knows the weight is on him. So now he's trying to, you know, play his game. So I liked his aggressiveness. Uh, I don't need to see a bunch of one-on-one play from him, but I do like his aggressiveness. As time goes on, he'll learn to just shoot over people. And he did a sweet running hook shot or baby hook, whatever they call it, that I said to myself, good Lord, his his." hand like it was even with the rim the defender was way below him listen if they're gonna put if if NBA teams are gonna put six seven guys on you and you have that many inches above them people you're gonna have to shoot right over them and that hook shot hey it may not be pretty it's the best shot in basketball the all-time leading scorer used that shot and he played over 20 years with that shot it's not pretty but why I just don't understand all these big men. They don't use a sky hook or just a hook shot. It is impossible to block without following the man. He's seven foot three. Imagine a seven foot three guy with a hook shot. God, how are you going to stop that? That's like Dirk doing his fadeaway. I don't think it's ever been blocked. I don't know. It may have been, but I've never seen it. So, you know, I was impressed with his aggressiveness. I was impressed with that. You know, um, Let's talk about Tim Hardaway Jr. I thought Tim Hardaway Jr. played well. I thought Tim Hardaway Jr. was aggressive. I really appreciated his passes. I liked the uh, the full court passes and throwing the ball down the court. That's the way basketball is supposed to be played. And that's fun. That's fun. 
So if I'm Hornacek, sec, this one thing you could tell your team, hey, if you play defense and get the rebound, y'all can get out and run and have fun. Because running is fun. When you're playing basketball and you fast breaking, that's fun. That's actually fun. Nobody can't say it's not. It's fun. It puts the defense at a dis- disadvantage, and it's a fun way to play the game, moving the ball down the court. Doug McDermott had a nice little dunk. I'm really rooting hard for Doug McDermott, only because he was a high draft pick. He, you know, he had potential coming in, and I just want to catch lightning in the bottle. You know, why can't that be for the Knicks one time? Catch lightning in the bottle. Let him start turn into a 15-point efficient a a game scorer you know I'm just hoping that we can catch lightning in the bottle you know let cancer become a better defender you know and speaking of cancer he started abusing him in the paint it was garbage time but he started abusing him one complaint I do have is a mini mini complaint I think that Hornacek needs to just maybe it was the first game but I think he played like 20 people maybe 15 16 players and I think that the Knicks don't need to do that. And I know that you want to save injuries, so I get that. Reserve, if that's the case, the fr- last five minutes or ten minutes of the fourth quarter, you could play all the reserves. I want to see Dotson with some of the, not the reserves, with some of the other guys so he can get open for his three-point shot. But I don't know why Kyle O'Quinn tr- uh, uh, started. Are they trying to build up his trade value? That could be the case. Let's start Kylo Quinn and show people that he's good so we could trade him for a draft pick or something. I'm I'm that's the only thing I'm thinking. Because he has no chance to start on his team. I don't care what he how he plays. I think Kansas should be the starter. I really want to see McDermott and Kansas start. I'm not even gonna lie. That that it's an offensive team, yes, but it also creates a good, decent bench. But then again, Courtney Lee played very well last night. He played like a true two-way player. And this running style of basketball is perfect for him. So I wouldn't be surprised if he starts at the three. He won't. It won't hurt too much to start him at the three. Of course, there's certain nights. Well, look, start. I believe the Knicks should start him at the three. Why? Because these big guys, LeBron doesn't post up. Yeah, I know Courtney Lee can't guard LeBron, but you don't play LeBron every night, and LeBron doesn't post up. You know? So... Kevin Durant, no matter who you're putting on him, he's not stopping him. We don't have Kawhi. So you only have you have to worry about a certain amount of small forwards. And but if you look at it in the East, how many great small forwards is it now? Since uh Melo's not here, Paul George is not there, you got LeBron. You got now when we play Giannis, I don't know what, what you gonna do to stop that boy. You can't stop him. Maybe having a quicker, shorter guy on him and keep him from getting to the paint and make him shoot over you. And he's still not a great jumper, jump shooter. So these are just things I'm just thinking about and from watching the game. I wouldn't mind seeing Courtney Lee, though. I wouldn't mind seeing Courtney Lee uh, start. That wouldn't bother me either. He's a good shooter, a good defender, and he literally plays to that tempo that they like to play. Him and and I could see him and Hard- Hardaway and Nilakina wreaking havoc on teams running up in the court. Running up and down the court. I mean, really. I could see that happening. As well as Chris Stapps. Beasley is Beasley. He looked like Mellow Light. And, you know. So it was the first preseason game. It was a little analysis. Like I said, I see the offensive potential of this team. Um, but if they try to continue to focus on just defense, just defense, 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 defense. Uh, they're going to they're gonna win 20 games. They're not going to beat teams with their defense. They can forget that shit. It's just not happening. And if you look around the league, a lot of teams that are very good teams are offensive-minded teams. Nobody accused Houston of playing defense. Golden State plays defense. The Spurs play defense. Nobody accused the Cleveland Cavaliers of playing defense. I know Toronto and Boston has a decent defense, but the truth is they can put the ball in the hoop, and that's what matters. And, I, again, it's going to be, to me, more enjoyable to watch the Knicks because the ball's going to move. That creates energy. I'm quoting Dan Tony, right? The ball is energy. So, anyway, I just wanted to give a quick analysis of the game uh, and of what I saw last night. And um, I want to take this time out to... Actually, I have to go back to a comment. Uh, I want to say the commenter's name on Facebook, the guy on Facebook who made a comment. I appreciated the comment, and I appreciate all your comments when y'all, you know, telling me that it's uh, 
that y'all like my show and and things like that. That's why today I took my time and I said I'm going to do it in a setting where you can hear it. You don't have to hear the the stuff in the background and stuff like that. So, you know, but I appreciate all the love. And by the way, if I were lucky enough to get hired by one of these conglomerates, uh, I'm going to be the same. I will, of course, without the cursing. Probably won't curse as much. But I'm going to speak the truth. Especially being that it's sports. It's just sports. You see what I'm saying? It's just basketball. It ain't nothing. You know, there's no, there's no politics in this. So I can speak the truth. <laughs> I just want to take the time out to read a couple of comments. Cloud Yo said, I feel like someone's permanently doing construction in your backyard. You make me miss New York. Thank you, sir. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's just because I'll be outside. New York City, you can't you can't stop it. It's always gonna be no, noisy. But somebody put a long post. Okay. I think the name is Maris Lapins. First of all, thank you, Isham Smith. Smith. I hope I'm not saying your name wrong. Isham, 34 Smith. Real talk, Greg. You should at least have your own show on ESPN New York or something like that. I appreciate that. Maris Lapins. I appreciate this comment. All media by large is bought. So if Greg goes to do some TV show, then... All Greg real talk will be will be manipulated by some executive producers, etc. Greg just have to build a following and progress the show to a high, higher quality. I agree completely wholeheartedly with that last sentence. That's how you progress faster and can advertise himself and others. You should. You know, like big podcasters, then he could say what's on his mind all the time. Greg, this message is directed for you to. It's my outlook on this show's potential because it has big potential. I really appreciate that. I really appreciate that. I do. Um, I don't think my real talk, if I build an audience, though, my real talk won't be manipulated because if I build my audience, it'll probably be based on my real talk. It'll probably be based on my character and who I am and, and, and my following. So if they put me somewhere and they put me somewhere because I have a big following and then all of a sudden I start changing up and I lose my following I get fired and I lose my following so I cannot the more people who follow me the more people who comment I'm not changing I can't because I'm doing it for y'all I'm doing it for y'all I'm not gonna change it oh man I used to you know who I used to listen to a lot I used to listen to Alan Alan Hahn when he had the Knicks fix and stuff and he got on ESPN and he completely changed I don't fuck with dude no more I don't fuck with him and now recently he's been trying to creep way back to the truth and real stuff because what happens is when you go on these networks or ESPN or whatever they do a lot of things for ratings but that's because the reason why they manipulate what you do is because they have a formula. But if I already have an audience, they, they can't manipulate me. I have an audience. You know what I'm saying? Once you have an audience, there's no reason to manipulate because you're going to have audience. And the same people here that's commenting on my YouTube page are going to be the same people calling in my show. You know, and, and by the way, I want to do a call in. I want to do call in episode soon. I'm still looking into that. But I just wanted to take the time to put that out there. So I really appreciate the comments. Keep them coming and I will keep the podcast coming. I got another podcast coming up uh, Friday. I'm going to try to do one right after the game. So we'll be back at the construction site. I'll probably be outside <laughs> coming from a bar or something like that. So anyway, this has been Nick's home court episode number 48. I am a gracious host, Greg Armstrong. Everybody have a good one. Peace. Go Yankees. If you're a Mets fan, I feel sorry. There's no shade. I'm just saying go Yankees. Peace. <laughs>